Hello one and all, welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Now the first three months of this year have been epic. I've been on some big adventures, but it's just the start. I said back in January that 2023 is gonna be the year of big trips. But before I embark on my next set of road trips, which is gonna see me add some pretty hefty mileage to the 360 and finally the GT3, I wanna spend some time here in the UK. I wanna catch up with some of my favorite car dealers and get behind the wheel of some press cars. There's some cool cars knocking around at the moment and, and I wanna check them out. So the next month on this channel, is kinda of gonna be a, a test drive special. As well as the regular Sunday uploads, there's also gonna be midweek uploads. So subscribe now, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of the awesome drives that I've got lined up. Uh, right now, I'm headed up to Alexander's Prestige, one of my favorite dealerships in the UK. They're in Yorkshire. Everyone there's an absolute legend. They always have wicked cars in stock. And actually, they've got four cars at the moment, which are all direct competitors in one of my favorite segments of the car market. I'll explain more once we get there. Now, just quickly before I head into Alexander's Prestige, let me tell you about Car Vertical, who is sponsoring this part of the video, but also sponsoring part of Test Drive Month here on the channel. Car Vertical is essentially your one stop shop for an incredibly detailed history of your car or a car you might be looking to buy. They use over 900 different sources to amass information on your car's background. You get this really easy to consume but concise report detailing everything from whether the car's been stolen or been in an accident. If it has been in an accident, they can get imagery from the insurance reports or the workshops and the garages so you can actually see what the damage looked like. Over and above that, they also provide really useful information like their mileage graph so you can check that the odometer reads what it should. There's also a valuation tool, meaning that if you're about to go in and haggle with a dealer, you kind of know the price that you should be trying to, trying to achieve. I was blown away by just how much information comes in one of these car vertical reports. So even if you're not looking to buy a car, but you're just interested about your own car's history and want to make sure that there aren't any secrets there, then yeah, head over, check out Car Vertical and use my link in the description below to get a discount on reports. It really is an eye-opening experience, but a super useful one if you're out there looking for a car to buy. Anyway, for now, let's crack on and head in to Alexander's Prestige. I love visiting this place, but staying productive within this space, quite difficult because there are so many distractions. Every time I come to Alexander's, I'm like, right, I've got a single mission, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna smash this video, and then I'm gonna head home. I walk in, and I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was here, and oh, wow, look at that. And yeah, I just end up ogling over stuff. Then I go, oh, hold on a sec, two hours have passed, I've got, I've got to crack on with my video. So let's do that. Like I said in the intro, I'm here to focus on four cars in particular. And these are those four cars. In my mind, these things represent the ultimate super 2 plus 2 GT cars. We've got a 992 generation Porsche 911 Turbo S, a Ferrari Roma, a Bentley Continental GT V8, and a quite incredible Aston Martin DBS. Now, all four of these cars go about the same job in very different ways, but here in the UK, on the used market, all four are available circa £200,000, very much making them direct rivals. And that's actually quite mad because, like I said, whilst all these cars essentially do the same job, they go about it in very different ways. And that starts with their original list price. Take the DBS, for example, here in the UK. DBSs, I think, start from new at around £238,000 before you've added any options. That means if you're looking at one on the used market at around 200 grand, well, it's probably a bit of a bargain because somebody would have spected up to 250, 260, something like that, and you've avoided that initial depreciation. The Turbo S, however, well, if you're looking at a 200 grand Turbo S, you're paying a slightly overinflated price because in the UK, these things start around 265 grand. Most 992 Turbo S's in this country are trading over list. 
um, the Bentley Continental GTV8. Well, if you're buying a brand new one like this car is, you're probably going to be paying a similar number to as if you went and spec one up from the factory. And the Roma, maybe not dissimilar. Uh, Ferraris do tend to trade over list, but the Romas have been a little bit soft in that department. So again, you're getting a fairly new car, maybe with some miles, at a similar price to somebody bought it from new. But it's not just price where these cars differ, they differ massively in their mechanical makeup. The DBS, for example, has a twin turbo V12, putting out like 715 horsepower and sending all of that to the rear wheels. Meanwhile, the Turbo S has a twin turbo flat six, putting out like 650 horsepower to all four wheels. Continental GT V8 also sends all its power to all four wheels, but it's the least powerful car here. I think it makes like 540 horsepower. However, you could get a W12 Continental GT and that would up that figure to like 650. The Roma also has a V8. It sends its power to the rear wheels and has circa 615 horsepower. And finally, as you would expect, these cars would all be very different to live with because their cabins, their cockpits, their interior spaces are all so different. The Bentley is just lovely. I always love this Continental GT interior. So many lovely details. It just feels expensive. It's a nice place to spend a lot of time. It's super comfy. And yeah, I mean, look at the stitching, for example. And then, if I remember rightly, the boot it's kind of massive, which is what you want on a GT car, because theoretically you're going to use these things for big adventures, and there you go. You could definitely fit a lot of luggage in there. But we'll come back to the rear seats in a second. The Roma, meanwhile, if I remember, has a slightly more compact rear boot, but has a much sportier cabin, as you would expect and maybe want from a Ferrari. It's got this potentially disastrous hyper touch screen steering wheel, which, well, I'm just not really a big fan of. But yeah, it's beautifully designed in here, the Roma, but feels a lot more tight and compact. I think the rear seats in here, which again, we'll come back to a more of a bench. If we come around the back, I literally have to open the boot, that little button there. We'll check this out, but um, yeah, it's definitely, definitely tighter back there, but still pretty good, what you'd need from a GT car. The Turbo S, Maybe in practicality is one of the worst. It does obviously have the front boot, but it's pretty small. However, the interior is fantastic because Porsche just get their interiors so right. When this 992 generation first launched, I compared it to a Bentley Continental GT. I said that Porsche had gone too far in that direction and moved away from being sports cars, become more GT, which obviously is great for this video. And yeah, obviously being a GT3 owner, I now love and adore this interior design, but if we just pop open that front boot, as I say, I think this car will lose in terms of its luggage space if we don't count the rear seats, because yeah, it's not massive. You can stack the bags fairly well, but uh, it's probably the smallest one here. Meanwhile, the DBS, being an Aston, should be one of the nicest cars to live with. This particular car I've already touched on, the spec is ridiculous. We are going to talk about it in detail. But it's probably one of the oldest cars, well it's up there with the Continental GT in terms of age of design, but actually it's aging super well. It's a really nice place to be. It feels as spacious as the Continental, whilst this kind of dashboard is a bit old now. I don't think it's aging particularly badly. It's a very nice place to spend some time. If we pop open the boot, I'm hopeful this is going to be large enough for, yes, you and your, your partner, your friends to go on an adventure. Seeing as all of these cars claim to be two plus two vehicles, I think it's only right that I test their rear seats. First up, the Roma, which is doing a pretty good job at automatically moving forward that seat, but it still looks insanely tight. Oh my gosh. Oh, you know what? I'm in people. Okay, my, my head is not. That's, that's as much as I'm going up. But if I pull the seat back, hey, hey. This is insanely uncomfortable, but it's doable on a very short journey. Actually, <laughs> it had to be a really, really short journey. Now, the Continental GT, it's essentially, it's, it's an estate car. <laughs> I know for a fact that I can happily get in the back of one of these. Um, they are so cushy and comfortable and have so much space. Oh, there we go, <laughs> look at that. I've just submarined back here and that can come back. I am so comfortable. Okay, stop seats. It's got automatic sensors that sense your knees and the chair stops coming back. But yeah, and this is great. My head is touching 
The ceiling with that's fine, I can lean forward slightly. I've got these lovely windows that drop all the way down. It's a fantastic view back here, especially with the pan roof that this particular car has. I mean, it's just, I mean, in terms of ultimate, ultimate practical super GTs, this is the route to go. That's just an absolute joy, that car. Now, Turbo S. I have been in the back, actually no, Paul Wallace has been in the back of Seb Delaney's old 991.2 generation Turbo S. Have I been in the back of a 992? Let's see what happens. Whoa. Oh, oh, okay. You know what? It's as bad as the Roma. It's, it, I actually think it's worse. Oh wow, it's worse than the Roma. Yeah, I, this is unbearable. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do this for more than 10 meters. I mean, yeah, get me out of here. I'm <laughs> borderline claustrophobic. Oh. So let's finally come on to the Aston. This is going to intrigue me because if this car is anywhere close to the Bentley, I'm buying myself a DBS because this thing just keeps on winning. Got to be slightly careful because, well, yeah, that's a bit tight. And, that paintwork is, paintwork is expensive. Okay, this doesn't look great. The seat is, what's the seat doing? Okay, okay, the seat is automatically moving. It's a much narrower entry point. Oh my God, you've got to have slinky hips, but, but once you get back here, okay. Am I about to get crushed? Okay, okay. Pretty bad, oh, like it's somewhere in between the Roma and the Bentley. I could probably do, I could do like a 20 minute drive in here to a restaurant for like, or to a pub or something, but I'm not gonna spend four hours in the back of this thing. But you could have kids back here. This is your car. <laughs> <laughs> well, say, have you said nice things? I hope you have. Yeah. Actually, I've been pleasant. You know what's quite good? Have you ever put anyone in the back of that? Uh, no. Can you get in the back of it? I could. Really? I wouldn't want to go further than like 10 meters. Yeah. But I can get in. Yeah. So yeah. you could get kids in there. Like, yeah. you should. I will stop. mention that to my children. I'm yeah. not sure my daughter's going to think, mm, <laughs> no, thank you, daddy. <laughs> but did you, did you choose, like, did you ever consider the other three before you got a Roma? Like, uh, well, funnily enough, no, because if I bought a DBS, it wouldn't help me with the Puri Zongui order, would it? Oh. <laughs> Now, all this Thank you, Ferrari, career. for that. <laughs> I'm not, I feel like I'm going to get a cease and desist from Ferrari. You've just like revealed a sort of uh, an illusion that they don't often admit. Yeah, I think everyone knows that, don't yeah, they? Let's yeah. face it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you look at things like the Conti and the DBS and go, hmm. Yeah, well I, well, I think actually the Conti is a car that can fit with other cars because you've got it. If you need a back seat, and it is a proper back seat, have you been in the back proper, of that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, one. I mean, it's an, an adult, it's an estate car. Yeah, an adult can sit in the back of that car. So if you need that, that's a great car. 100%. That's a great car. Although, for a fun car, it's not. It's not a fun GT. It's a great GT. Uh, we all know. I mean, 911 turbos. I mean, it's just, it just does everything, doesn't it? But because it does everything, that makes me not kind of want it. Yeah, it's. It's the head says that is the best car here. Yeah. And it probably is the best, but it's not necessarily the most desirable. Yeah. It's just uh, the whole thought of it's just a bit. Boring. If you have other cars, it's a bit, it's a bit boring, and not as practical as all the others. Well, that's what I just you know? discovered. I couldn't believe it. I always thought, you know, Porsches are great because you can do everything with them. Actually, that's kind of lost my practicality usability yeah. test. The surprise for me, at least today, the DBS. Yeah, I mean, isn't it beautiful? Well, I think as well, I and mean, we need to. If, when we go out, we need to have a drive in this car because I think as well you'll find that it surprises you. I'm a bit with Aston's a bit style over content. Always look pretty, you're driving them, you're slightly disappointed. But, I mean, it's like 700 odd horsepower. That's, well, interesting, that's 812 rival. So it's actually a step up, isn't it? Because that's, sure. you know, that's a 300,000 pound car, really. So you're getting to a different level. So, and as we are getting a little bit older now, you know, that's a car that you don't have to drive like the, yeah, the wings off, you know, elegant. it's just like... You cruise and it's got the Aston badge and I think you're right. I think we have to take this out. I've actually never yeah. really driven one in anger, so I'm, I'm keen to find that out. Well, and then, uh, not in anger. Just, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, definitely, definitely not in anger, Andrew. <laughs> I will just be wafting along at very low speeds. <laughs> Let's take one other to, I guess, to compare. Now, I'm going to discount the Turbo S. I, Please I gotta, do. And Tony likes them as well, yeah. so let's oh, just forget oh, it. We don't yeah. that way. So, Roma versus Continental. Because I'm, I, I'm bagsying that first, yeah. I'll let you pick 
what well, the other I car think, is. I think because I'm going to drive the other car, I haven't driven one of those in a while, and I know you quite like them, and you might need to think about the back seats. So, you know, it could be a contender. Mm -hmm. So, let's take the Comte. Done. Yeah. Done. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Now, Andrew joked about me hopefully not driving this car in anger. I I'm not sure he was actually joking, though, because I keep hinting at the fact, I keep teasing the fact that well, this is a pretty special and unique car, and you've probably already figured that out from the spec. This is actually a Q commissioned car, which means theoretically it's one of one. Q is the department at Aston Martin that lets customers basically do whatever they want. And this car cost new £320,000. Do you remember a short while ago when I told you DBSs start at £230,000? The man who ordered this car spent a hundred grand on options. A hundred grand! The paint is a unique colour called Absinthe Green. I think you'd have to drink Absinthe in order to spend a hundred grand on options on your DBS. Uh, interior, we've got a two-tone. The, the sort of beige colour is called Sandstorm. And then the green is again Absinthe Green. Apparently one of the most expensive and complex options for this car was these elements here, which Aston don't often allow in a contrast colour but for this car, they matched in that absinthe green color. There's also this super lovely sort of, I guess, exposed grain wood trim. So if I rub it, I can feel the, the grain of the wood, which is really, really nice. But yeah, it's just ludicrous to think that somebody would have spent that much on options. Even crazier is that this car's done just 1,500 miles and it's now back to its list price, essentially. 240 grand, I think is what Alexander's have got it advertised at. Yeah, meaning that the customer lost 100 grand in 1500 miles. Apparently, he doesn't care, and therefore, he's my complete hero. But yeah, mad thing. Anyway, let's let's step away from the spec in this particular car. Let's talk about the DBS in general. <laughs> Today, it's really surprised me because I have been in and around them before. I have driven one very briefly in Carmel during Car Week quite a few years ago, but I never really turned it up to 10 or 11, and I'm not going to be doing that today, but yeah, I just, I don't know. But today, when you compare it to the other three, it's suddenly super attractive. motorway test done and I am in the most respectful manner possible gonna turn things up so out of GT mode into sport and then sport plus firm up the suspension slightly manual gears how do I do manual gears do I just use, I just use the panels right off we go there's a policeman right there <laughs> perfect timing yeah, wow the engines come to life hasn't it you know what? actually I feel like this car is maybe a car of many characters, many personalities. It was just on the motorway, I had to change lanes suddenly and put my foot down and it came alive. And now actually, I'm in that Sport Plus mode, it's got, it's got an Aston snarl. It's got personality. For me, GT cars are all about the longer distance trips. It's not necessarily about being the quickest up a mountain pass or something the ultimate Nürburgring lap time. It's about being on a trip and the car being quick in all kind of situations. And this thing, oh, it's giving me a kind of the feels without having to be absolutely mental. <laughs> I'm enjoying this, people. I mean, let's not forget, though, it has got over 700 horsepower. So if we really wanted to stamp on it, we'd be going outrageously fast and probably quite squirrel squirrely because, yep, rear wheel drive. <laughs> Oh, I like this thing. I mean, I do love a modern Aston. I think I just forgotten. This car's been out a while now, but... Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's quick. And it feels poised. Like I said, it's surprisingly light. When you look at it, you think it's going to be closer to the 2,000 kilo mark, but no, it dips under it. So therefore, it's kind of dancing, dancing around a little bit. Ooh, a bit of a pothole, just trying to avoid those. <laughs> I did say... I was going to take it easy because this is an exceptionally expensive and special car and the last thing we want is stone chips. 
I think this thing would be a blast in slightly wet weather or with the traction dialed back. It's a bit of a monster. And I already know I'm having way more fun at four tenths than Andrew probably is in the Bentley. He'll be more comfortable, he'll be having a lovely time. He's probably got the music on so loud he's probably completely unaware of what's going on around him because that's Bentley life. I don't love the gargles and burbles behind you, but the sound of the twin turbo V12, no matter how synthetic that might be here in the cabin, really nice. It's just a really lovely car to drive. Boy! DBS. Who would have thunk it? Well, this is the motorist where we've stopped for lunch and I've now got myself a coffee and we've both been blown away by. What a place! I, I definitely need to come back and do a full showcase of the place at some point, but uh, as I say, it was just a stop off on our day of GT car test driving. And before we swap cars, I want to hear what your thoughts because you said you hadn't driven a Continental GT for a no, while. I hadn't, and I forgot how bloody good they are, to so be honest nice. with you. Do you know what? I, I was thinking this is like a sporty, a sports car Range Rover. It just rides and it glides but it grips and it, uh, do you know what it is? It's confidence. Yes. You've got so much confidence in it. You feel that everything's gonna work. You feel that every time you come out of a corner, it's there. It's just, and the, the V8 is, well, who goes for a W12? Yes, literally. You can hear it burbling away. It feels lighter. I think it's a great, it's a I, really good car. If you really want to look at stats and make it a bit more comparable to the DBS and the turbos, I find the W12 gets you close to those numbers, but the V8 is the one to have, which is why yeah, I'm glad it's, it's in, this, in this test. But the only thing about the Bentley is it's so, good at that. Sometimes you kind of lose yourself in the car, you have the music on and you're kind of wafting away. You sort of get a little bit disconnected, but as the ultimate usable Super GT, it ticks it's so. Daily. You could drive that car every day, everywhere. It's just, yeah. Only thing is, I wasn't looking at you thinking, oh, I'd rather be in that. Because the DBS. Oh, mate, I, I think see. I could. I might put an offering for that car soon. If I can get rid of the airtight quickly enough, I'll be knocking at your <laughs> door. Six, hello. <laughs> well, also, let's also talk about the fact that that's a very expensive one. You had another one you just sold for, what, 165? Yeah, yeah, Something yeah. Something like that. So yeah. you can get them. Yeah. The only thing which is weird is it says, on Google at least, uh, that the weight of the DBS is like 1700 or 1765. Initially, I thought, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It does feel a little heavy on the front wheels. Do you think? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. But, you know, it's not aiming to be. And a mirror, like that one that's parked us there. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. What I, into performance. It's bloody fast, but I was trying to be, you know, careful. <laughs> you told me to be careful. So can I have a go in that? <laughs> yes. So we're now going to swap, and I'm going to drive the Bentley back because, in my mind, that is actually the benchmark for me. Is that Continental as the ultimate Super GT? That that's the benchmark. So I'll be interested to see if I still think that after my awesome experience in the DBS. But here we go. My takeaway coffee from the motorist. Come and check this place out because I'm coming back. Yes, yeah, me awesome. too. Yeah. Oh, I love these cars. Now, like I said back at the showroom, if you're genuinely trying to decide between these four cars, well, firstly, you're a very lucky person. Secondly, really, it's gonna come down to how you're gonna use the car that's gonna help you make your choice. If you're someone that always seeks the, the alternative route, the twisty back road, if you're heading to Europe all the time to go to the Alps, do some proper driving, or the Roma, maybe the Turbo S, the DBS, probably more for you. But if you're someone that wants to use the car pretty much all year round on all occasions and get the best of all worlds Continental GT I mean how many times on this channel have I sung the praises of this car I've used it so many times before in various different guises W12 V8 coupe convertible and every time I've just absolutely loved it because it just takes pretty much every box the the only way that this car lets itself down is on this sort of extreme dynamics if you really get to a proper road and you really want to crack on, it is a little bit numb and very heavy. But I don't think you really get into a Bentley or buy a Bentley to attack the corners in. But that's the thing about this car is it, it just covers all bases. It looks the bomb. It's got a fantastic badge. It's got a great infotainment system, wonderful sound system. It's quiet in here. It's comfortable. You can fit four adults. You've got loads of baggage and it has got good performance. Okay, like Andrew and I were just saying, it's down on performance compared to the other three cars today, but you can make up for that by getting the W12, although the V8's the one to have, 
and it doesn't feel lacking. You can still get up and go. The car is still quick. It's just held back by its weight. It's like the cushy suspension. I've long said I would want one of these cars in my life. I just think they're freaking awesome. The DBS has turned my head. <laughs> Following it now in the sunshine, I'm like, oh. I wish I was back in it. It does let itself down in some areas, the Aston, but as a package, it's it's giving me something to think about because traditionally or usually I would always lean towards the Bentley. Anyway, let's let's waft on, get back to the showroom. Well, back at the showroom, and what an awesome and, and, and surprisingly eye-opening day it's been. It's been so much fun to compare these four cars. Huge thanks to Andrew and the team at Alexander's for kind of facilitating it all. I know we didn't drive the Turbo S and Roma on camera, but as mentioned earlier, well, firstly, Andrew owns the Roma, so he knew how to compare it. I've driven it plenty of times. And also Turbo S, whilst it is the logical choice, mm, it's, not the, it's not the way my heart would lean if I was making this decision. Which way would I go? I honestly don't know. It would be very tough. And whilst we didn't drive it today, you really can't discount this Roma. It is fantastic. It's the lightest, it's the most dynamic, it's the most emotive. It is still a great cruiser. Anyway, let me know in the comment section below which one you would pick. And as I said at the start of the video, subscribe now and turn on notifications because this marks the start of test drive month here on Seen Through Glass. In a few days time, the next test driver will be with you. So yeah, I'll catch up with you very soon.